I will start talk. Good afternoon and welcome to the School of Serenity. We are being broadcast by the Walk to Serenity and 4M TV. And we are a mental health initiative to help share about mental health awareness globally. And we are being broadcast around the world. So thank you for tuning in today. I am your host, Kara Keem. I am an author and I have written this book, Discovering My Wings, which talks about how my life radically transformed when I started following the voice of my intuition. I am also an intuitive therapist, a holistic life coach, and a Reiki master. And I have a private practice blending Reiki and psychotherapy. And I am so excited for our guest here today. Let's welcome Kevin. He is a 28-year-old business analyst and business owner. He's also a mental health advocate, and he created a social media platform and a magazine to provide mental health resources and help improve people's mindset. So Kevin Cahill, thank you for being here today. We are so glad that you are willing to join us and talk about this initiative that you've started. Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure, honestly. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So you're a business owner. And tell us a little bit about how you started to get passionate about being a mental health advocate as well. Because I imagine in business, yeah, sure. you don't talk a lot about mental health. Yeah, sure. So to be fair, like I have a main job right now, which is like business analysis for an investment bank. Yeah, yeah. But the business owner thing, that's only since the start of the year, so relatively recent. So juggling the two of those, to be honest, has been a bit of a mental health struggle itself. Oh, um, I completely understand that. Yeah, but it's still been a good learning experience. Um, so yeah, my business is also kind of like investment-related stuff. Um, I won't go into that too much now, but anyone can check it out via the Mindset Matters page afterwards if they want to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole Mindset Matters magazine initiative, to be honest, I'm not sure where the original idea came from, but I do think like probably it was originally prompted just from maybe realizing that there's not a huge amount of like free resources out there that people can get for mental health. Yes, yes, and, yes. That's a good point. Um, except for this show, which I haven't actually watched enough of, I must tune in a bit more. Um, but yeah, I think for myself, and I think I mentioned this to you earlier, but um, with the business and with work, I kind of wanted to just give back something or do something towards... Um, spreading awareness, I guess, for mental health. Yes. And I think my biggest strain at the moment is definitely like finding time for um, things like that or hobbies and things like that. So um, just being able to dedicate a bit of time, even when I'm a bit time pressured, uh, well, it helps me feel good, but also I know I'm, I'm doing something good that way. So yes. that was kind of the starting point. Yeah. Well, you certainly have a very time consuming, busy job. If it's like investment banking in the United States, it's long hours, late night. There's just a lot that goes into it. And so finding time for mental health, I think, is really important, especially when we have these high pressure jobs. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like One thing I've realized, especially since I started my own business as well, because I do a minimum nine to five in my normal work and then finding a bit of time to do whatever work is required on every day for my business after that, plus running this whole platform. And it is, it is a bit, bit much, to be honest. But I think even doing all of that kind of brings me back to like the importance of this whole thing because there has been times where I've even found myself a bit stretched or a bit uh, burnt out. And even having to just take a step back from certain parts of the work, um, even if it you know slows me down, maybe progress wise in the short term, I find if I put my mental health and my self care and stuff first, it gets me so much further and so much better 
in the long term anyway. Yes. So it's kind of the stuff that I kind of talk about or the stuff that I'm kind of trying to encourage people to do. I need to actually follow myself a lot of the time. Well, it's so true. Yeah, we all teach what we need to learn, right? And it's so, it's just a time saver because if we take care of our mental health first, then we're better at what we're doing. So it actually prevents burnout and it makes us more efficient. Um, so people don't often think, they think if I just grind and I just do it and I just dive into work, but it's really the inverse. It's really the opposite of that. Yeah, and that's something I've noticed actually nowadays is that especially with like some somewhat like the younger generation, like younger than myself, um, since having to kind of use social media as almost a um, reaching out to clients and things and trying to build up sort of a base, there's kind of like a hustle grinding culture or something nowadays. Oh my which, gosh, yes. <laughs> it actually it's i understand it but at the same time i've tried it myself and you can work all day but by the time nine o'clock comes you're not even any bit productive and you probably haven't done half the stuff that you wanted to do because you haven't been operating at probably maximum capacity because you're neglecting the self-care it's true. It's true. If we put self-care first, we're actually better at our jobs. We're more effective and we're more efficient. So yeah, that's, sure. that's the one thing I don't think people understand. It's a, it's a secret. Try it. And so you grew up in Ireland. And when we spoke originally, you talked about how there's a real stigma around mental health, particularly mm -hmm. for men. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I think... Um, nowadays it's a lot better like even in my hometown like in the last few years for like a small place there was like an, an alarming amount of like suicides for, so I think that's kind of brought a lot of people's attention to the fact that like this is something that is important and that people need to actually address or recognize whereas Previously, it's almost like it was just kind of something that's kind of ignored or um, not thought of as a like a real issue. People would off like when I was growing up. I think if you were to say that you were struggling with your mental health or anything along those lines, or actually show some proper emotion, especially as a man, then you'd kind of be. I don't know, maybe there'd be jokes made or be like, oh, like, grow up, those sort of comments. Whereas I think it is getting somewhat better nowadays, but there is still a bit of that stigma there, I think. And that's one of the aims of hopefully Mindset Matters is to kind of um, normalize a little bit of that sort of stuff. I, and I think it's so important because men are taught to be strong and to be stoic and to not show emotion and to not be weak. And so if you're anxious or depressed, then you're going against the way you're supposed to be. And I think that there's this real beauty in sharing and being vulnerable and, and saying that we're struggling, but that's what happens with suicide. People just can't share that they're struggling. It's too embarrassing. They're too ashamed. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is that as well, like, yeah, that's that's kind of the concept that men are brought, a lot of men are brought up with, especially in, as you said, like kind of rural Ireland, like people, a lot of people are a bit more old fashioned. So there are those old fashioned kind of mentalities are definitely still in place. Um, and I think it's silly at the end of the day, because in the future, a lot of a lot of us will look back and realize, you know, uh, male or female, everyone has similar emotions. Yes. And you can have a different range of emotions and hormones, regardless yes. of what gender you are. So every, all of it's normal. It's kind of down to the person themselves. And I think a lot of people don't really think that way. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's so true. Because that's part of the human experience. We came here to be human. And human involves all of the feelings. It's fear and it's anger and it's sadness. And, you know, this is the human experience, but somehow we've gotten this delusion that we're supposed to always be happy and we're supposed to always be okay. And that's just, the, nothing could be further from the truth. You know, as a, 
psychotherapist, I'm like, no, it's okay when we feel these feelings and just really normalizing them, which is what you're trying to do. Because the more people understand that we're all feeling these things, then they won't feel so odd in the world. Yeah, and that's it. Like, I think a lot of people just don't realize or that, they're, that what they're feeling is normal uh, or maybe they're seeing a lot of um, perfect lives and things on social media uh, yes. being portrayed. And obviously that isn't the reality more often than not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that just gives people the wrong message. And obviously if that's all you're kind of growing up seeing, especially nowadays where... Um, I think from a young age, people are way more involved in social media and they, they, they kind of are bound to get warped yeah. perceptions of reality. Nice. Um, I think it's just important to have like resources out there for free that can kind of teach people a little bit about this. Like a lot of the stuff that's going to be in the magazines is to use yourself probably common knowledge, but to a lot of people, stuff that they just wouldn't have realized. Oh, wow, absolutely. And, and like that's why as well. So like I've I've done some of the content for the magazine, but for the most part, I've tried to um, reach out to people using the Mindset Matters page, people in the community like yourself who have like um, experience mm-hmm. and know um, experience in the field and kind of know uh, a lot about these sort of uh, issues. To actually write write a lot of the articles, and uh, to be honest, I've been really happy and kind of impressed with the feedback because we've had so much people uh, already write articles for us on their like specialties. And oh, beautiful! Yeah, it's good to see you. We'll obviously, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll speak to you about that at some point. To see I was going to say, yeah, us. if you ever, <laughs> I specialize in working with highly sensitive people. I don't know if you're okay. familiar with them, but a lot of people aren't. But We'll we'll connect and I'll let you know about highly sensitive people. But that's a great because a lot of people I work with think something's wrong with them until mm. they understand that they're just highly sensitive. Nothing's wrong. And this is normal that they feel this way. And then we really work to help regulate their nervous system. Yeah, that makes sense. I think and that's a, the thing I think from my own experience. I think a lot of people, you know, you you may you say highly sensitive, but there's a lot of people out there that probably don't fit into the same category as your clients, but they may still be a little bit further along that scale and not kind of realize they might just think they're hype, like something wrong with them, but there's actually just a, a little bit extra sensitive, you know? Yes, yes. And we tend to stigmatize people who are sensitive. Just toughen up, you know, I mean, that's big in the US. It's like, just toughen up. Don't don't be so sensitive. We tend to really shame people who are sensitive and who feel the world really deeply. I'm a highly sensitive person and, you know, lights and chaos and noise can be a lot for us. It can be too much. And people just don't understand. They're like, oh, just get over it. Oh, just toughen up. But they don't understand we're actually working with a different brain chemistry and a different nervous system. And so we have to learn how to self-regulate in a different way. Yeah, that makes sense, to be honest. And I think, um, and you're definitely right, like you said the US, but definitely similar in Ireland in the sense that you do get that sort of bro, like jock culture where um, <laughs> if you were to show emotion in a certain setting, like it'd be disastrous for your like public rep right. or something, yeah. you know, which is, yeah. is silly, really. If you can't beat yourself around your friends, you'd probably should be evaluating your friendship group. It's so true. It's so true. And so you started the social media platform Mindset Matters through Instagram, right? Is that how you sort of got started? Yeah, exactly. So we just started from scratch, really. Um, And that's been an interesting one for me because I hadn't really done much in terms of trying to grow a social media platform before that. Um, but I'm lucky enough that my girlfriend is a digital marketer, so that's been oh, useful. That's great. <laughs> that's a power team. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. But it's going well. She like she doesn't have much time now in fairness to help me. She has her own agency as well. But um she kind of just showed me a lot of the ropes to begin with. And from there it's it's I think it's proven to work because 
we've met like as of like two days ago i think we have like two thousand followers now yeah i just noticed that i was scrolling yeah. looking at the content again so that's yeah. wonderful I mean, that's 2,000 people who have access to the resources that you're sharing with them. Yeah, exactly. And I think quite wow. a lot of the people that, that follow us are in the field themselves or are spreading similar messages or something along those lines. So they also, when you know, when they share our stuff and vice versa, I think it helps to just spread it a bit more, which is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you share about some of the content that you're posting as actually just looking it up before we got on. But it's, I mean, it's very, very helpful. Well, yeah, I mean, I encourage people to go and take a look yes. <laughs> if yes. they're watching. Yes. But, um, but regardless, a lot, of, a lot of that, again, uh, some of the inspiration comes from my own um, lessons. Some of it just comes from other people's pages and I might've taken some ideas from there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think, because to be honest, you will see a lot of similarities amongst other mental health sort of pages because at the end of the day, we are trying to spread basically the same messages for the mm -hmm. most part. Mm -hmm. um, but to be honest, I'm kind of using the social media for the moment as a as a platform just to grow. And we we actually have had quite a lot of people, like a surprising amount of people message me just being like, oh, like we love your posts. This really helped me. Yeah. all this sort of stuff which is Beautiful. amazing to hear Beautiful. but i mean the intention from the beginning was it was the magazine so we haven't even really got to there yet um, yeah you haven't done your deep dive yet but I just pulled it up. I mean, you've got this beautiful color scheme. It's lots of blues. It's very soothing. And it's Mindset Matters Magazine is the handle for how to find you. Mindset Matters Magazine. Um, and then, yeah. yeah, the post, oh, it's, everything's backwards here. They're just these pretty, pretty soothing, calming, nurturing colors. And uh, you can just read through just different tips. So that's how you began, but you're, this is really meant to turn into the magazine, like you said. Yeah, exactly. So to be honest, I've, I have queued up a couple of months worth now of articles and magazines, yeah. basically. Um, so it's going to be a weekly thing. And we should have really um, released this a while back. But, uh, well, there was initially a slightly different... Um, aspect to it so what we had pl planned was that it would be a monthly subscription uh, membership basically and with that whoever signs up can pay like any amount that they want mm -hmm. they get the content uh, weekly and all of, all of the profits will go to the mental health charities oh beautiful but, but one thing that I found and this was a lesson for me and I, I've realized now from my other business as well is that a lot of the time, if you want people to sign up for something and input car details, it's it's a lot more difficult, even if it's essentially free. Yeah. So, so yeah. what what we've kind of changed there is, and I was going to release it anyway and go ahead with whatever donations we could and hope yeah. that it would build up over time. Yeah. But just be to be honest, because of all my time pressures at the moment I don't think I'd have enough time to like fully focus and grow it out that way mm. so for the time being I'm working just on growing out the audience and when because I'm due to finish my main job in August I'll have a lot more free time then yes. Yes. so that's the idea is hopefully around then be able to like roll out the magazine properly and I think for the charity aspect, what I'll do is once it's developed a good um, user subscriber base, mm -hmm. we'll then look, look at rolling out the subscription membership if that's what people want. A lot of people actually voted to keep it as a free, a completely free platform, which I'm also kind of fine with. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. Well, and maybe you can do somebody here in the United States, Tara Brock, she, her podcasts are free. They're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. She's a Buddhist psychologist, but then she gives you the option to donate and says, this really helps. It goes towards, you know, X, Y, and Z. So that might be an option. It's, you keep it free, but then at the beginning, 
you have a link and you say, we encourage donations for this mental health charity for this reason. That's a good idea, actually. You know, that's that seems like really obvious now that you say it, but I yes. hadn't actually thought thought of that at all. I really, I really like that. I think that we might do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. what somebody I really like does, and she's in the mental health field, and it resonates because it's like, okay, I can get the information for free, and also I want to support her. I love her cause. I want to support what she does. I can easily donate here. Yeah, that's true. And from from what I was just telling you about the issues that we were kind of seeing ourselves, like that actually makes a lot of sense because it doesn't force the subscription for anyone that doesn't want to put in their details, but anyone that wants to can do so. Right. Yeah, that's 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 a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited for this magazine to come out. How will people access it? How will they find it? So. Uh, currently, you can register your interest at mindsetmattersmagazine.com. Okay. It's That's just a simple one-page input your email, and you will get put into our kind of log of email of subscribers, basically. And once it's ready to go, I'll, it'll, there'll be a, probably a warning, and I'll, I'll update on the social media page a bit that, you know, we're going live next week or whatever. But yeah, it'll just be sent out then via PDF. So it's not going to be a physical magazine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be like an online uh, format, essentially, which I, I think, think is that easier. More or less is better these days. It's good for the environment and more accessible. Yeah, exactly. And like it'll go straight to people's emails. It's probably the easiest way, realistically. And um nowadays you can yeah like you said you can get a lot more into it in that kind of format anyway yeah beautiful so i would love for you to speak to men for a minute what would you tell men do you have any pearls of wisdom or advice um and we don't want to exclude women but i just think it's very stigmatized for men to feel emotions what would you tell any man who's struggling with any sort of mental health situation do you have any pearls of wisdom you would share yeah sure um and yeah of course like we don't we don't want to exclude women either obviously and i think a lot of the stuff applies to both genders but like you said like even just from the statistics of the instagram page you can see that women are a lot more um likely almost to interact with certain things i think many even have that, like that feeling of oh i'm not gonna like this in case anyone sees it me being yeah. soft sort of sort and of that, thing that's the highest population the suicide rate it's men and it's usually middle-aged white men that's the highest population but it's men i can't remember the exact numbers but it's like 20s to you know older years it's white straight men who are the highest suicide population so that's why i bring up men for this moment yeah, no, it's true. And I, I think this one of the magazines touches on that, actually. The statistics on that are, are like, surprisingly yeah. crazy, um, especially because, and I think that's the reason I'd done an article, there was an article done on that, is because, um, you know, a lot of the time it doesn't really get mentioned. People realize that there's maybe a bit more of a stigma around men, but... Mm-hmm. It's like it's clearly a problem if year after year the rates are significantly higher. You know, there's clearly something needs to be addressed there. So one thing I would say is if you are a man of any age and you are struggling in some way or you feel like you can't really cope with whatever situation you're dealing with at the moment, um, just speak to somebody for the most part. If, if you don't have someone close to you that you can speak to, there's people like yourself, obviously, who are, who literally do that for a job. Like yeah. talking, talking therapies gets, again, therapy alone gets like a little bit of stigma, I would say. Yeah. Um, and people are, I think, afraid to like openly admit that they've gone to therapy, which is ridiculous. But yeah. just being able to speak to someone about your emotions without ha- fear of judgment for a man is like surprisingly beneficial yes Um, yes and you know my practice is all remote so i just want to say sometimes it's more comfortable because you feel like there's a distance there it feels less vulnerable for some people to not be there in person in an office so i just want to say people could start virtually if they feel more comfortable doing that 
Yeah, for sure. And I think that's probably even more accessible nowadays. Yes. Um, and I know in the UK, there's, in, in most areas anyway, there's free services that will do that and they will do it over the phone, even if you don't want to be even seen on the um, screen, you know, it can yeah. be as impersonal as you like and you can still get your issues out there. Yes, beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's probably, that would be my main thing because I do think that's probably something that has the biggest stigma around it. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, so the resources like my own, um, like the magazine and the, the Instagram page, like those are all, those are always going to be available and people can go and look at them, but it's not, it's not necessarily going to resolve um, your struggles if you are struggling and speaking to someone more than likely will help. Um, so I think regardless of um, your situation, if you are struggling to cope, I would recommend that people reach out and try and speak to somebody, a professional. Yeah. And the more men we have like you, Kevin, talking about this and sharing and being vulnerable, the more comfortable men will get. There's this great quote by Marianne Williamson that talks about shining your light. When we shine our light, we give people permission to do the same. And so when we have people like you leading the way, other people say, wow, he's doing it. He's being vulnerable. He's talking about it. And it gives them permission as well. Yeah, and I think that actually was some of my intention as well because I wouldn't have previously spoken about a lot of this stuff and, like, I may have suffered a little bit with mental health struggles when I was a bit younger, I think, more just not really knowing how to deal with my emotions properly. Um, small things like that. Luckily, I haven't ever had too, too deep of a struggle, but at the same time, like, speaking to people has helped me massively even in some things that I consider myself to be like smaller issues yes so I think no matter what um it, it is something that uh, men should be doing or and I, and I do agree I think when I initially started doing this I probably keep some people that I know and stuff were surprised but I go like what's what's this I didn't think you were into that sort of thing right. and I'm just like it's not necessarily something I'm into it's it's just something that needs a bit of recognition really yes. um, and I did have a few friend, close friends who I would never have thought had had any any struggles or anything um, come to me randomly and say look I'm not really happy with that you're doing what you're doing because it's it's been useful for me and I think it'll be like useful for a lot more and that they maybe even wanted to do a similar thing and just been uh, afraid to do so. So even that alone from one or two people is like encouragement enough for me. To yes, yes. So and maybe you can collaborate. And here's the secret of life. We all have struggles and we all have trauma. Every single human on the planet. Now there's big T and little t. You know, like little T is what you're talking about, like more emotional things and working through them. And then there's major traumas. But no human is getting out of here without some sort of struggle. You know, the Buddhists believe we're born into suffering. And so everyone's got something. And so the more we talk about it and the more we share, the easier it is to sort of heal and to grow through it. Yeah, exactly. And like what may seem small for you can be a huge thing for someone else. You know? Exactly. Um, exactly. So, like even I have the tendency to say like some things that I consider to be smaller issues, but for another person, those could be like life changing root struggles. So at the end of the day, it's your own perspective is what's stopping people. But like you say, every, everybody has their own stuff. Everybody has. All. Everybody has something. And even if you don't feel you personally do, there's ancestral trauma, there's generational trauma, there's collective trauma. Being in Ireland, there's certainly, I mean, every country in the world has collective trauma. There's, there's all sorts of things that are affecting all of us at all times. We just might not be aware of it. Yeah, for sure. And again, that's that's the point of the mindset matters. I think is is yes. awareness because there, and it's been interesting for me as well because a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that. Um, we've had people like write articles on is is maybe things that I've never actually heard heard of or personally like felt or come across. So it is, and and some of it's quite um, 
meaningful you can tell it's meaningful to the person or it's a serious thing to the person so it is it's interesting for me as well just to be able to see see yeah. and learn about some other people's struggles i think absolutely beautiful i am so honored you came to talk to us today kevin and i love your work i love the advocacy that you're doing share with us how people can find you so we've talked about it's instagram what are the main ways people can find you yeah so instagram is just mindset matters magazine and we have our website where you can register interest if you don't have Instagram, which is www.mindsetmattersmagazine.com. Okay, perfect. And even email, if you would, if that's how someone who would want to reach out, is mindsetmattersmagazine at outlook.com. So across the board, Mindset Matters Magazine. Mindset Matters. Okay, Mindset Matters Magazine. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today, Kevin. And if you, the audience would like to connect more, come check out karakeem.com. It's K-A-R-A-K-I-H-M.com. And you can see all of our shows and book a 15 minute consult with me if mental health is an area that you would like to learn more about and think you might need some support. So make sure and connect with me and Kevin and learn more. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, thanks very much. Okay. Bye-bye.